Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. Common issue to discuss today and one that's not really talked about enough online I feel like. Sheep and goats with a hoof wall that pulls away from the sole of the foot, forming pockets when mud and stones get crammed up in there. So what's going on? This is a disease called shelly hoof. In cattle we call it white line disease and it is technically a defect of the white line. The white line is the, it literally looks like a white line, around the edge of the hoof which is where the hoof wall meets the sole of the foot. And it does this weird thing in sheep and goats where it pulls away and forms pockets. Now in cattle it looks quite different so in sheep and goats it has its own name, we call it shelly hoof. Right, so what's happening here is that that white line where the keratin is binding the outer hoof wall to the underlying sole basically unzips and that's what it looks like if you look under a microscope is those cells unzipping. Now once it's happened just a little bit then mud and stones get crammed up in that crack and force that pocket up even further. So while that pocket remains there it has the potential to get worse and worse. It's not actually generally a painful condition in itself. It's not painful for that hoof wall to pull away, but it does become painful when the pressure from that mud and stones forces its way up and causes abscessation. It also means that they lose that weight bearing hoof wall, forcing them to walk on the softer sole of the foot. It's a huge problem, at least here in New Zealand, really, really common. And it does seem to go through a perpetual cycle of somewhat recovering and then getting worse again on its own throughout the year so even without us intervening um, so it definitely kind of comes and goes um, but while that pocket is there it will certainly have the potential to continue to get worse. Now unfortunately as common as it is here in New Zealand it's also really poorly understood simply because it seems to be very multifactorial as in there's many factors at play um, that, that seem to be contributing to, to whether it happens or not. So yes, there seems to be a hereditary component, a genetic predisposition. There also seems to be a nutritional component because we see it more in animals on poor quality pasture and deficient soils. And there are a lot of um, what we call trace elements that should be in the soil coming through the grass that the animal's eating. There's a lot of those in New Zealand that because of our pumice volcanic soils, around the place, around the whole country, we end up with a lot of trace element deficiencies. So New Zealand's actually pretty, pretty bad off for its trace element deficiencies in the soil. And a lot of these trace elements do contribute to healthy functioning of the hoof and good quality of that hoof. So, so certainly there seems to be hereditary component, um, a nutritional component, because we see it more in these animals on poor quality pasture and deficient soils. We also uh, see an increased risk of it happening with over trimming of the foot or foot bathing, this specifically with formalin is the, um, the studies that I know of that we're looking into that. Um, but the exact causes and how they kind of interplay is still really poorly understood. So for example, even if it looks like it's getting worse at a particular time of year, we're not really sure is that because the pasture quality is worse at that time of year or because the ground is particularly hard or particularly soft at that time of year. So there have been studies, but it's so, you know, the more factors you have feeding into something, the more tricky it is to actually figure out what the causal factors are, which ones of those are kind of byproducts and which ones are really the, the actual cause. So I can tell you where I personally stand, but it is all a little bit of guesswork. Hereditary, sure, a lot of hoof conformation and hoof health is hereditary, at least in part. But I work with a lot of lifestyle blocks where the animals are completely unrelated, built up egg day pets, you know, year after year, they get in one more and raise another little lamb and that one gets added to the mob, where they all have the condition or adults that have come from somewhere else with perfect feet and within a year of being on the property now have shelly hoof. So I weigh much heavier on the environment and I suspect the nutritional aspects. So what I do with that foot is we wanna strategically remove the wall of that pocket so that mud will stop cramming up in there while trying to maintain a shape as much as possible that still allows weight bearing from the weight of that animal. 
as long as mud crams up in there, it will continue to unzip. All right, if it's bad enough and removing that pocket is actually gonna leave the animal with very little weight bearing hoof wall left at all, then I jump in and use a hoof cement, a hoof putty to fill in the pocket, okay? And just allow it to grow out. No matter what you do, just remember that in sheep and goats, the hoof wall is gonna grow down from the coronary band at the top, which is like the nail bed, at about three millimeters a month. So super slow. It's gonna be a long time before you see healthy hoof wall you know, pushing that pocket out and growing out. But we do need to remove that pocket um, and, and stop mud from cramming up in there, otherwise it will keep getting worse. It's not always coupled with noticeably poor hoof wall quality, but often it is, where the hoof wall is actually really thin as well and kind of splinters off. Now in these situations, I certainly lean heavily on the nutritional side of things and I recommend supplementing with a hoof supplement that is appropriate for ruminants. Remember ruminants, our grazing species like cattle, sheep and goats have a very different um, stomach and gastrointestinal tract to things like horses. So we do need a ruminant specific supplement, unfortunately, um, that's going to, to protect those uh, those supplementary minerals in the, the ruminant stomach and allow it to get where it needs to go. Now finding a supplement like this can be really tricky to actually find. If you're one of our clients, get in touch. Otherwise have a hunt around what's on offer in your area or even your country. Um, chat with your ruminant vet if you wanna try and use a, an equine product. Those are much easier to find. Our dose rates may just be out of whack, so, so check in with your vet for that. We wanna harden up those hoof walls and improve the quality of that white line so that everything stays a little more tightly locked together. The other thing I should mention is that some of our good quality supplements, so palleted uh, form supplements, may already have some of the, the um, supplementary compounds for hoof health that I'm thinking of, things like um, methionine already included in there. So if, you've, if you're already on a really good quality concentrate, um, have a look there and, and check in with your vet and see if that's the right one to be on. Okay guys, I hope that that helped. That's what we know about it at least. I wish I had some more clear cut answers for you, but we don't really have the answers to give. But there you go. Please thumbs up and comment if you found this useful. Subscribe to catch more like it and I will see you for the next one. Bye bye.